Ben, grab the gun. Whoa! Jay! Jay! Come on, man! Oh! Seriously? Man! I thought you were going to grab it. Uh, I played in the Western Hockey League. I was a goalie and I got scored on seven times in one period. That sucks. And four goals were by one player. So. I grew up with choir. I was singing and my voice cracked horribly. So. Most embarrassing, getting caught stealing. Yeah, that's pretty embarrassing. Same. That's embarrassing. You know, shoppers, like they have like, they clean the windows so well and then I just like, I ran and then I bumped and then like, and then like, yeah, I fell down. And they felt so bad that they gave me like M&M for free. So. Walking and I casually fell. <laughs> casually <laughs> fell. Just casually <laughs> fell. And then bailed like, bam, hard on my face in front of the whole cafeteria and all the pillars and line thing came down on top of me. And I had ripped my pants, maybe about, about a foot right where, yeah, right where my bum is basically. My friend Crystal has lived through some amazing things. She has an incredible story. I was very athletic when I was a teenager, and I actually um, passed out after a race, which was very weird for me. Three weeks later, I was taking a sweater off one day, and when my hands were raised like this, I couldn't breathe at all. Three or four weeks after that, one morning, I woke up with a huge lump on my neck. They did a chest x-ray, a CT scan, everything, and then they sent me to Children's Hospital in an ambulance. And within two and a half days, I had a biopsy, was diagnosed with cancer, and started chemo an hour later. So it was intense. And by the time they found it, I had actually only had like max two weeks left to live. The first time walking to the treatment room, that was um, that was a scary walk down the hallway for sure, because you just you don't know what's going to happen. The first week I was in the hospital, my youth group actually called me, and they were all praying for me. Like the whole church was praying for me at that time, and that was pretty amazing actually seeing the support of the church uh, in that time. A year later, I was still on chemo, so it had been 20 months at this point. I was asked to sing at History Maker or a youth convention. And uh, yeah, I don't know why I agreed to sing because I had a shot of chemotherapy before the long weekend and was on really heavy pills all those days. And I knew I was gonna be feeling pretty sick, but for some reason I didn't say no. And yeah, I remember we played the Friday and the Saturday and I was pretty, feeling pretty ill. And on the Sunday we finished playing and I really wanted to go home that night, but no one would take me. And I was so mad. I was just thinking, some youth group you are, like I don't have a cold, I have cancer for crying out loud when I don't feel good. Like I really don't feel good. Um, and to top it all off, they made me go to the service that night, which was not where I wanted to be. Uh, and as I was walking into the building, grumpy as ever, I felt the Holy Spirit say, uh, Crystal, something really exciting is going to happen for you tonight. I was sitting in the very back of the stadium beside a really good friend of mine. And all of a sudden, I felt the most powerful, beautiful, loving presence of God fall on me. And I could not move. I was stuck like this and I just started to cry and to cry and I've never felt anything like that. And all I could think was Jesus is about to heal me. And I've never been that confident in something in my entire life. I had a headache and my headache left and this heat went through my heart and this pain that was always in my kidneys left and I didn't feel nauseous for the first time in almost two years and I would have told everyone in the stadium that. I called my doctor a couple days later when I got home and I told him what happened and my two head nurses and they ran tests over the next little while and uh, yeah there was no more cancer to be found and um, my kidney test came back perfect and my heart results came back perfectly normal and uh, 
My nurses really started to cry and my doctor seemed pretty stunned. And um, the home he grew up in, his dad was an evangelist and he went to lots of different meetings growing up and he actually saw a lot of people people healed and so he totally believed what happened to me but he told me later that he hadn't really thought of, of, of God for a really long time so that was really cool, really cool. My family prayed all the time for lots of things, but I don't remember us typically praying for people to be healed. But it wasn't until I started reading the Bible on my own that I discovered that healing's in God's character. In Exodus it says, I am the Lord, your healer. And all through the Gospels we read about Jesus healing people time and time again. Healing's in God's character, and it's part of his love for us. We see it in the Old Testament, in the life of Jesus, and it's even demonstrated on earth today. I did. I actually saw a lot of people physically healed just by praying and stuff. I think that there are like amazing things that happen that are like unexplainable by any, anything else. So yeah, yeah, I'd say yeah. Um, some sort of God. I don't know really if it's like God, Christian God, but some sort of God does. I think. Uh, well, there's obviously someone that's doing something, someone above that's watching over people. My mom, uh, she had diagnosed with breast cancer and God healed her and there was no diagnosis so I totally believe in healing today as well. God's gonna make your paralyzed legs go away? No. But in the sense that like it saves people from like say drugs or something bad that happened to them? I'd say yeah. I think it would be nice to believe but I'm not there yet. We can't talk about healing without talking about the Kingdom of God. The Kingdom of God isn't a geographical space. It captures the idea of God's rule and reign. In any city or country around the world, we can experience the reality of God's Kingdom. It's marked by peace and joy and love and healing. Broken things are made new, lost things are found, tears are wiped away. Crystal's story demonstrates a glimpse of God's Kingdom invading Earth. And when I think about Crystal's story, I'm reminded that we have amazing medicine cutting edge technology and advanced medical methods. And God's part of that. He creates and uses the minds and resource that make all of it possible. But when that same medicine couldn't help Crystal, God healed her in a miraculous way. We can experience God's love and power, His kingdom on earth today. And those who love and obey God are waiting for the fullness of the kingdom when Jesus returns to earth. And Jesus told His disciples that He was gonna return one day. There are over 300 references in the New Testament to the second coming of Christ. It will be a day of judgment and restoration. All wrongs will be made right. In Revelation 21, it tells us that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And there will be intense joy that goes on forever. There will be no more death, no more pain, and no more crying. I like to think of it like this. So if this line were to represent all of time, then this line would represent the day that Jesus returns. But when Jesus came 2,000 years ago and started teaching, he said that the kingdom of God had arrived. Yeah, in Matthew 9, 35, this is what it says. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, the ones around his house, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. We live in a unique time in history. The kingdom of God has arrived, and yet it's still coming. Some people call this the now and not yet of God's kingdom. So 2,000 years ago, Jesus came and he sent his Holy Spirit, and this marked the new era of God's kingdom. But we still look to the day when we experience it in its fullness. But we live in this time. 
that you and I were all invited to participate in God's kingdom by praying for healing. Jesus had power and authority and he healed many people with all kinds of diseases. Think about the man that he healed with leprosy and the woman with eternal bleeding and a man who was crippled and unable to walk and he opened the eyes of the blind. But in Matthew 10, he pulls his 12 disciples together and he gives them authority to heal the sick. But it wasn't just limited to them. In Luke 10, he's with 72 of his followers and he sends them out to do the exact same thing. And then it gets more exciting. The Word of God invites us, that's me and you, to participate in this. 1 Corinthians 12 describes all kinds of supernatural gifts that God gives to his kids, including gifts of healing. Nowhere in the Bible does it mention that these gifts are limited to a certain period of time or to a small group of people. All of God's children are invited to ask for and receive healing. This reminds me of my brother-in-law, Mike. He's amazing. He often prays for people in his life that he knows, or even if he just meets them, that are sick or in pain. Um, before we moved to uh, where we're living now, I used to get my hair cut by this one guy. His name was Dewey. Great guy. He was a ton of fun. And uh, this one time I was going in to get my hair cut, and as I was um, getting ready to go, I just had this sense that I might actually have an opportunity to pray for Dewey, and I'd never thought about that ever before. And uh, I had just been at a camp with some friends, and we had seen a whole bunch of people healed at that camp. It was wild. It was so fun. And so I get to the salon or whatever, sit in the chair, and Dewey knew I had been traveling, so he asked, where you been? You know, how, how things been? So I said, oh, me and some friends were at this camp, and you know, I don't do this often, but I just thought, I should tell him stories. Like, how's he going to respond if I tell him stories of other people being healed? And so I said, it was crazy, Dewey. One night, like, tons of people got healed. Like, they, they were sick. There was problems in their bodies. And then God made them better. We prayed, and, like, miracles happened. And he was curious, and so I started actually telling him story after story. There was, you know, a bunch of kids whose, like, knees or elbows, shoulders were healed and cool stuff like that. So anyways, I'm telling Dewey these stories. And uh, I kind of got lost in the stories. And when I was done, he looked at me in the mirror over my shoulder. And he's like, oh, you know, those are miracles. He started giving me some good advice. He's like, you know, I think you have to believe when you pray. And I'm like, I think that's it, Dewey. I think you're right. And then it was sort of like I felt that was the moment. It was like, I think this is where I'm supposed to ask him if there's anything I can pray for him for. And so I, I just threw it out there. I'm like, Dewey, is there like anything I could pray for you for? You need healing for anything? And he's like, actually, yes. He said, um, um, when I'm cutting hair all day long, I'm, I'm bending side to side, you know, cutting sides and all that. He says, it hurts my back and all night long my back hurts. It's just this, it's not, it's not cool. And I said, well, you know, I, I bet Jesus could do something about that. We could try praying. Like, what do you think? He's like, okay. Can I keep cutting your hair? So I just sat there, eyes open, watching him cutting my hair, and I started talking to Jesus. And as I was praying, he started like testing his back out, which kind of scared me because I thought, like, well, what if nothing happened? And I didn't have the guts to ask anything. So when I said amen, it was kind of like that was it. And I tried to find another subject to talk about. So, anyways, I get in the chair about a month later to get my hair cut again. And he says, Remember how you prayed for my back last time? And I was like, quite sheepish. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I've had no pain since. And like, I, I think I'm supposed to be the one with faith and all that, but I'm like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, no pain at all. And I'm pretty sure he knew that Jesus exists, loves him, and actually healed his body. And so that was a pretty neat experience for me, and hopefully it was a great experience for Dewey as well. Not just the healing in a church service, but a healing like during a haircut is kind of cool. On Alpha, we want to give everyone the opportunity to receive prayer for healing. One lady named Jean was going to Alpha at a church in Wales. At the time, she was in her 60s and had been blind for more than 15 years and was in a lot of pain because of an infection that had eaten away her retinas. She went on an Alpha weekend, and during the weekend, she experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in a way that she'd never experienced before. In a moment, all the pain that she'd been in for all those years just went away. Even though she was still blind, she was so excited that God had taken away all of her pain 
That night she went to church because she wanted to tell people about it. The minister of the church wanted to anoint her head with oil as a sign of the healing that had taken place, just like they did in the Bible. As she wiped away the oil for the first time in 15 years, she could see. She went home that night ecstatic to see her husband, who she hadn't seen in years, and she couldn't believe how white his hair had gone. Yeah, sometimes when we pray, people get healed. But other times, for reasons I don't fully understand, some people aren't. One of my best friends, Joey, was in a devastating motorcycle accident five years ago. He was hit off his bike by a car and tossed 50 feet onto the road in front of him. His leg was broken in more than 150 places and he broke both of his shoulders. Ever since, he's been in constant pain. Now, Joey travels with me a lot, so I've seen him prayed for countless times. In fact, there's no one I've asked God to heal more than him. And even though we've prayed hundreds of times, he hasn't been healed. That doesn't mean that we'll stop praying. The reason I keep praying isn't so much that I've seen masses of people healed. It's because Jesus invites us to do it. I want to live out what Jesus shared in Luke chapter 10. This is what he said. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. A few summers ago, my grandpa got really sick. I remember my family and I praying desperately that God would heal him. But one day, something changed. It became clear that Grandpa's life was soon coming to an end, and we had peace about it in our hearts from the Holy Spirit. We placed him into a hospice and began to pray that God would take him peacefully. Now it takes faith to believe for healing, and it also takes faith to believe that we'll spend eternity with Jesus. My Grandpa had already experienced the greatest miracle of all, salvation. God had forgiven his sins and transformed his life. I love what the preacher to the Pope, Father Raniero Cantalamessa says. We're free and able to ask the Holy Spirit at any time to heal us. But if the Spirit does not do it, there's no reason to think that it's because we have no faith, or that God does not love us, or that God is punishing us. We share a lot of different stories, and they intersect our lives in unique ways. Because all of us have experienced sickness in our lives, and all of us can relate to having a loved one who's sick. Some of us can relate with the miracles we've shared, and others of us know the feeling of loss too. This is what I do know. God wants to meet each one of us right in the middle of what we're going through. Each one of us is invited to be prayed for and to pray for others to be healed. So how do we do that? It helps me to remember that God is the one that does the healing, not us. So there's no magic technique involved or secrets to get God to do what we want. But when we pray, we pray with love and simple faith. There are a few things demonstrated and taught in the New Testament that give us some direction on how to pray. When you pray, pray in Jesus' name. We have power in His name. Yeah, another thing we see in the New Testament is this idea of laying hands on people. If it's appropriate, you can put your hands on the part that's hurt or simply put a hand on someone's shoulder. And sometimes God will speak to us in advance about who or what we should pray for. Often on Alpha, group leaders will ask God if there are specific things that He wants to heal. God may speak to them by bringing a specific word or a picture into their minds. And when we see God in this way, it builds our faith and it gives us courage to pray. Many people on Alpha have experienced healing after someone shared what they sensed from God in prayer. It was about the exact thing that they were suffering with. After praying for someone, it's good to ask how they're feeling. This helps us know how we should continue to pray. Some people are healed and we can thank God together. And other people may not be healed, but we can continue to pray for them. Yeah, sometimes people get better, but aren't totally healed. Jesus once laid hands on a man who was blind, and then he asked, Do you see anything? And the man said, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. So Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes a second time. And this time his eyes were healed completely. He could see everything clearly. At youth camp a few summers ago, I spent the week in the dish pits, and one of the girls working there, his name was Shanna. Now, when I first met her, it only took me a few seconds to notice that she was severely cross-eyed. And this has impacted her life in countless ways. Shanna told me that her mom had gotten a car accident while she was pregnant with her, and that's why her eyes were damaged. She's had three surgeries to try to correct this, but none of them worked, and her doctor told her that she would deal with this her whole life. 
So during one of the evening services, there was an opportunity for students to pray for one another for healing. Now she had prayed for her eyes to be healed tons of times before, but even still, she went up and asked for prayer that night. I found her later that night near the dish pits, and she looked at me and I knew right away she'd been healed. I could see it in her eyes. They were working together perfectly. I remember the next day I had to double check to see, and it was true, God had healed her. Now that was over two years ago. She's still healed today. And this changed everything in her life. The way she looks at people with confidence, the way she reads, the way she sees signs, everything. And when I see her, I look at her and I remember that God heals people when we pray in Jesus' name. One pastor used to say, when we pray for no one, no one gets healed. Instead, we pray for everyone, and not everyone's healed, but some are. I wonder if you'll give this a try. Will you let someone pray for a need that you may have? Or maybe you'll be brave enough and have the faith to reach out and pray for someone that needs healing.